Hey guys, Connor here with Chrome Designs and thank you so much for watching this video. Today we have a very, very exciting After Effects tutorial I'm going to be showing to you guys. And I'm going to be looking at a particle transition to text. Now I actually made a video similar to this using the same kind of particles to text transformation. Uh, but this was for Cinema 4D. Uh, however, it did receive a large amount of views and reasonable good feedback. So I was playing around with After Effects to try and recreate something uh, along those lines and I've simply come up with a nice intro that can be used for all kinds of promos and everything and as you can see in this preview here this is it now we are going to be using track code form uh, so you will need this plugin before we go ahead and get started uh, you know you can go ahead and get this it's actually on YouTube how to get it or whatever uh, that's up to you but anyway we'll go ahead and we'll get started uh, so I'm just going to simply go to I'm going to start a new project in fact so I'll go file not open project what am I thinking uh, new new project um, yeah, I'll save one I and when the new project opens, we're simply going to go to composition and new composition. I'm going to call this Chrome, obviously for a, uh, one obvious reason, and I'm going to be using 1920 by 1080. So I'm going to be working with the 1080p resolution. 29.97 uh, resolutions works fine for keeping the file size down, and I'm going to be using about 10 seconds duration. If you're going to be using a promo or something a little bit longer, uh, obviously you can increase uh, the duration, but uh, you can obviously alter this later on. So there we go, we have, and we have a composition. Now I'm going to be add in a PNG file that I created in Photoshop. It literally took me um, about, I'm not sure how long it took. It took about 30 seconds to make. If I go ahead and drag it in there, literally it is some white text positioned in the center, more allocated to the right. Uh, I just saved it as a PNG, so as a transparent background. And this makes it a lot easier for editing uh, later on. It works better with form, in my opinion. Uh, so now we've got that in. And in this composition here, we're going to simply go ahead and we're going to make another composition and we'll call this main. And again, we're going to have the same resolution, everything exactly, exactly the same. So now we've got main here, we're going to go to Chrome, we're going to have to duplicate this layer. I'm going to duplicate it twice, so we have Chrome 2 and Chrome 3. And the second one I'm going to rename to A, and this is going to stand for Alpha. And the third one I'm going to rename to D, and this is going to be called Displacement. So now once this is all in, we're going to go ahead and drag in Chrome. We're going to drag in the D and we're going to drag in the A. Uh, what you actually want to do is you want to have the A on top, the Chrome at the bottom and the D in the middle. So that's good for alignment so far. So we're going to make a new solid. Now this is going to be the particles we're going to create here. So we're going to call this form and go to effect track code. And we'll go ahead and add in the form plugin like so. So obviously we have a pretty hideous square right now, which uh, is obviously not that great. So we need to go ahead and we'll start with base form and size X. We need to make these the same uh, size as it is for our composition. So mine's 1920 by 1080. And size Z, uh, we're going to have for zero. Particles in X, we're going to make about 500. And particles in Y, we're going to make about 400. And we'll lower the particles in Z to about 1. Like so. There we go. That's looking good. That's looking okay for base form. Uh, as it stands, we're to particle. We're going to go ahead and just crank up the size to about 2. Uh, we'll keyframe this later on. This just uh, means you can see it quill, clearly uh, quicker, quicker on before we actually get into the whole design of it. So particle, that's looking okay for now. Uh, shading is okay. Fractal field. Uh, in fractal field, we're going to change the flow Z and we're going to change this to about 50. And again, we're going to change the F scale to about 17. Now, this will change depending on your composition settings. So, if you're using the same ones as me, I recommend about 17. Uh, but again, if you're using something a little bit lower, like 1280 by 720, you can just lower this down to about 15 or around about that kind of mark. Um, so while we're here, we're going to change uh, this displacement mode. I'm going to change to X, Y, Z individual. Make sure uh, your little time, your little uh, keyframe selected here is uh, zero seconds at the very beginning, and we're just going to keyframe X, Y, and Z displace, and we'll come back to that later. And then we'll go ahead and we'll move on to layer maps, color, and alpha. We'll change the layer to second one, which is alpha the A. And we change it RGBA to RGBA and map over to X and Y. So this will map over onto the text. Now onto displacement, we'll change 
uh, to individual x, y, and z. And we'll map over to x and y again. And the layer map for z, we're going to change to the D, which stands for displacement. Okay, and now while we're here, we'll keyframe the strength as well. So obviously we've got four keyframes now selected, so we can go ahead and close this off. And if you hit U on your keyboard, you'll see that all of these come up uh, so far. And we're going to be working with the keyframes to actually create a transition into the text. Uh, and if you actually zoom in here, you can see there's something going on behind this text here. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to simply keyframe the strength, and the strength's going to be 50 here, and the X displays is going to be about a thousand. Uh, the Y display is going to put about 800, and the Z display is I'm going to make about 2,000, like so. So it kind of comes in uh, as in this is some close to the camera, and it's really the depth that gets more depth, so it's not kind of uh, completely linear and flat. Uh, so that's okay, as you can see here, it all starts to move around the text, uh, which is trap code form. Uh, but obviously we want it to reveal it into the text, so we're going to basically make another keyframe where we lower the strength and all these settings. I want it to come in around about 3 seconds, so I'm going to lower the strength to about 0 here, and just simply 0 on all of these, like so. So if you go ahead and just scrub through here, you can see that there's basically forms into the text, like so. Obviously, the text is already there. So you need to keyframe the opacity of the text so it's not there for the beginning, uh, but it slowly fades into the particles when it starts to form. Uh, so to do this, we're going to go to the Chrome layer, and we're going to hit T, which brings up the opacity options. And we want to make keyframe the opacity here is going to be about zero. And moving on, as soon as it comes in, will be a hundred, obviously, like so. Now, getting these exactly lined up is somewhat an art. Obviously, I'll close off the D and the A for now. Uh, so somewhat is somewhat an art. As you can see, it looks kind of dodgy right there. Uh, so we need to make sure that it is aligned properly. Obviously, you've got a lot of time. I don't want to spend too long uh, just working uh, completely on moving keyframes in the opacity. Uh, so we'll simply say that is about right for now. Okay, there we go. So obviously, it comes in there. And particles, particles, here we are, we've got the text. That's looking all good so far. Now we want it to zoom out, well not zoom out, we want it to kind of uh, produce particles at the end as kind of an uh, end transition. So we're going to move along. So if it comes in about three seconds, if you show the text about four seconds-ish, uh, along the seven, uh, seven second mark, around about then, depends on kind of what color you're going for, uh, you just want to keyframe all these values again. So simply go ahead and click this little diamond uh, over here. Uh, as well as the opacity here, in fact, on the chrome layer. So then, obviously, we'll move over to about 8 seconds-ish. Uh, we work on these top layers. Uh, so the strength here will go to 50 again. And I'm going to add similar values, about 1,000. Uh, you can use a little dragger to make more different looks, but it doesn't really matter. I usually like these settings. Uh, so 1,800 and 2,000, not 200, there we go. So if you see there, it starts to explode again behind the text, which is pretty cool. Like so. And this is back out. So now I'm going to highlight all of these, and I'm going to move them over right to the end, just so it keeps on going, although we will uh, alter this later on maybe. And so obviously the text is still there, so we're going to simply go ahead and keyframe this text again. So if it's 100 there, for example, move this forward just a tad, and we'll lower the opacity to about zero, like so. So if you see, okay, that's not exactly lined up, so we need to kind of alter these keyframes just so it looks around about uh, like it could be, look all right, there we go, that's looking good. Okay, so that's all right. And so over here, is looking good again so we're going to go ahead I'm going to create a RAM preview for now and just have a look and see how good it actually looks okay so that looks good but if you notice when it forms into the text it looks slightly harsh it looks like it's not it's not doing much there and it all of a sudden comes in uh, too close uh, so it's a bit hard like as I said a bit harsh so the end it forms uh, a bit out of character so to kind of solve this we highlight these keyframes right click go to keyframe assistant and go easy ease again you can press f9 on your keyboard if you will but we'll go ahead and create another ram preview and you should be able to see a slight more kind of 
subtle and gentle uh, re reveal of the text like so. And that looks a lot better in my opinion. So there we go, we've simply got the kind of base of our whole uh, transition text. And one other thing I like to do is if I go to particle, and I'm going to keyframe the size, okay? Uh, so when it goes over here, when everything goes to zero, I'm going to keyframe the size to two. But at the start, I'm going to add a keyframe for 10, like so. So as you can see, the particles are a lot bigger here, and they kind of gradually get smaller uh, to form with the actual text, like so. And I'm going to uh, create a similar thing at the end. Uh, for example, the size there is going to be, and so we'll click U again, like so, so the size will come up. And we simply keyframe this size here, and then go to the end as well, and then add 10. It'll create a similar thing just for the end, so the particles generally get bigger as they explode or form out. So that's looking good. Okay, so that's looking good, as I just said. So we're gonna go ahead and work on a background now. We'll simply go File, New, we'll make a new solid. Uh, same kind of uh, 1920 by 1080 and go ahead and just click a generate I'm going to generate a ramp now getting these right colors is kind of quite hard I'm going to go for kind of bluey whitey kind of color in my I think that suits it quite well okay now I want it to be uh, more in fact I'm going to change it to a radial uh, like so so if you have a look here that's a lot better than the black anyway. But obviously, the white's a little bit too bright because this text. Uh, you want it to be able to be quite comfortably red. So that's looking good. Okay, we'll maybe make this color just a little bit darker. Just to create more contrast around the outside. There we go. And, you know, that's looking pretty good so far. Now, one other thing I like to do is add a motion blur to this form. So to do this, we're going to simply click on the motion blur, clicking these little uh, circles up here and then adding it onto the actual form layer. Now I would show you, if I created a RAM preview it would take a long time but when you actually do this you'll notice that it makes it look uh, a lot more fluid and it adds kind of a more elegant kind of feel to it. So that's looking good, okay. Um, but still you know the particles are a bit full on uh, so one way I like to get around this is on this particle thing up here I'm going to change the opacity random to 100. So that basically means uh, there's more random in the opacity, so some will have 10 opacity, 10% opacity, some will have 100, uh, some will have 0, some will have 50. So it really varies it up. I really like this kind of look. I think it looks really sleek. And so you can see here, just by these green shots, it's looking, uh, coming together quite well. But if you want to look at my preview, it had a shadow. So we're going to be creating a shadow now. This is really, really simple, uh, but it creates a really nice look. Uh, so we're going to simply highlight the form and these three layers, and we're going to go right click and we're going to go pre-compose and I'm going to call this, in fact I'm going to leave it at that and I'm going to click OK and I'm going to duplicate it and the one that we duplicate we're going to call, uh, we're going to rename this, I'm going to rename this shadow, make sure it's the one underneath. So now we need to make sure a 3D layer is on this layer because we're going to simply rotate it. So go down here and transform and we're going to alter the X rotation to about, I'm going to make it minus 80, like so. And obviously, we're going to drag it down because it is a shadow and it's down here. So, if we walk, if we kind of scrub through here, I'm going to change it from full to a little bit lower just so it's easily uh, viewed for you guys. We've got a nice shadow for mating, and as you can see there, uh, but obviously, that's not a real life shadow. We're going to alter this so it makes it look uh, like it's more subtle. So, we're going to go and on here, I'm going to go to effect and I'm going to go to we're going to generate a uh, fill, we add a fill to the layer, and we're simply going to go to blur and sharpen and add a Gaussian blur, like so. Uh, so the fill, we're going to make a nice grey colour, like so. We can change these and we'll increase the blur as well. And that grey is a little bit too light, it needs to be able to be stand stood out. Uh, so the blurriness is okay, I'll add it to about 27, I think that gives a good uh, kind of contrast maybe just a little bit lighter like so and there we have it you can see a nice shadow coming in here and that really makes a more kind of 3d studio look which really adds to the whole thing I feel um, one other thing in this pre-comp one we're going to rename this we're going to rename this um, uh, title 
and we'll go to effect and I'm gonna add a stylize and glow you know, it's kind of just just generally literally what it does so it does what it says on the tin and it's gonna kind of glow around I quite like this look can't bad again it makes it a lot more elegant so if we increase the intensity here uh, you can see that it looks quite nice on the text and everything uh, so it makes it there's more of a shine going on especially even when you go to the end as well like so and there we literally have it we've got most of the stuff going on here and the title everything is looking pretty much in place you know there's other little things you can add for example I had uh, the little text underneath that revealed that is simply just text with uh, opacity change and everything um, I added a little shine on the text uh, that came across that's just by using uh, a few of these effects over here and that's all depends on you uh, so you can create whatever you want there's other little things you can add in fact one more thing maybe before I do go if I make a new solid um, okay and I'm just gonna drag this below the shadow I'm gonna go to effect generate and I'm gonna generate a four color gradient now this is a quick one I kinda like to create a nice light kind of thing instead of actually using the light itself uh, this gives a good effect so I'm gonna change uh, all these colors to black apart from one apart from the pink one bottom left and I'm gonna change this color to a nice orange color like so that's looking good I'm gonna move it over more into the center over here now obviously this looks uh, pretty poor and it kind of goes against what we just completely done. So we're going to get rid of the black. So we're doing this, we're going to change uh, the blending mode to screen. And this will basically get rid of the black. So we've just got the orange light. Now when this is added in, obviously you can change all of these to whatever you want. You can move one over, you can make one red if you wanted to. You could make one any color you want. If you wanted to add a bit more blue in there. Uh, really adds for a nice feel I, I like anyway I think it looks quite good uh, but we're gonna leave this one to black and you know you can move it over however you want really whatever kind of floats your boat uh, whatever you think looks quite good you know you can lower the opacity as well uh, to about 75% if it's too strong uh, but that's creating a nice kind of effect so if I quickly create a nice RAM preview uh, I'll maybe hopefully I'll, I'll wait for it to go and to the text actually forms uh, maybe looking at it just a bit there, maybe the shadow is a bit too dark in my eyes, uh, but I really like the colours going on in the background. But anyway, I hope you guys have learned something from this anyway so far. Uh, you can use this in uh, loads of different intros, most things, anything. Uh, this kind of effect can be applied. Anything that reveals is generally just a transition, like a custom transition. Uh, so most things just with text coming in, you know, this could be involved. It could, again, like I said, a whole intro, a whole promotional video, um, anything like that. Because it does look really professional, especially when it's done right and the keyframes uh, are got into um, perfect synchronization, so it looks completely fluent. Uh, it looks really professional, kind of like proper low studio finish. Uh, so the text actually formed now, so we're going to go ahead and have a look at this. Now, I think that looks really good. I'm, I'm really liking this effect. I think that keyframe looks quite good. Uh, maybe the opacity should have come in just a little bit quicker. Um, but you know, that's a bit too late for that now. Well, it's not, but I'm not going to bore you with altering the opacity. I've shown you the skills. Uh, thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope you learned something. Uh, so, yeah, thanks a lot. And uh, I'm sure I'll see you guys soon. Uh, so, thanks for that. See you later. Bye.